Hey guys, welcome to some BeamNG Drive. Uh, for my first video with this, I'm going to be starting out with some more simpler cars, but I have played a bit of the game, so I have found some crazy and wacky mods, but for right now what I'm going to be doing, and I plan on making this a continuous series, is what I'm going to call car durance. Uh, basically going to be torture testing cars on a few tracks that I've found, and seeing how they match up to each other. So, without further ado, I'm going to start off simple with this Bishu Covet 1.5 DXI. And away we go. So, I know some people have done this on YouTube before. Although, like, once I found out it was a thing, I decided, oh, maybe I should make videos on it sometime. But... I was already doing this kind of thing and had found this track before I found those videos. So yes, it's not super original idea, but it's not like I'm doing it only because I've seen it somewhere else. Um, but yeah, essentially, cars have to have the steering capability to make turns. Um, and, ooh, that's... That's bad bumper placement right there now. Um, they've got to be able to have the steering still for turns. It's got to be able to run. And as you see, radiator's already blown, so it's not looking too good for the COVID right now. But uh, I will help it out. Oh gosh, I oversteered that. I will help it out if it flips over. I will shut off the engine so it doesn't start with oil and flip it onto its wheels before making it continue. And there is a mud section up here that cars will sometimes get stuck in. I will help pull them through. If it's not they got, like, unless it's like they got stuck due to having no power left early, but... And also if a car is damaged enough that they cannot reach over... <sighs> Sorry, that jump made me nervous. Uh, if they can no longer reach over about 20 mile per hour and they're just slugging it along, not fast enough to do any damage to themselves, then they will also be disqualified there. And I will keep a running track of what car has made it what distance. So, we'll kind of just see how things go. But, yeah, we're already overheating the coolant here soon. It's temperatures in the red. And... It's just not looking up there, cone to overheating. Overheating, gosh. Yeah, so it's just not looking the best for this car. A little bit crunched up on the front. And we're approaching the big ramp of this place. Not the biggest jumps, but with that weird landing surface, is quite a doozy sometimes. But we landed on our wheels, so we will just continue off right away if the car will get itself going. Come on. I know you got a bit more in you. You can make it at least a lap. Gosh, if you can't do that, then why did I bother picking you? <laughs> but, yeah, like I said, I was going to... I did say I was going to keep it simple for this first one. Come on, turn left. There we go. Um, but I'm probably going to do three cars per episode, and I'm... I've got another track as well. I'm going to be running all the same cars on both tracks. Um, but probably going to split up the two tracks into different episodes. So that they're own, their own kind of thing. It all depends on how long it runs. But um, I'm going to do two of the more normal cars. And then I will do one kind of car that's like higher end car that... I don't expect to go well, but it's just kind of for for giggles thing. And we'll just kind of have to see where it ends up. Ooh, jumped over that bump that time. That's the one that killed our radiator originally, and our head gasket is damaged, so I don't think we'll even make it to the mud. Yep, it's it's dying. So we'll let it kind of coast to its end. And hopefully I remember in editing to make 
get an aerial view of this place and start putting down points for where they made them to. Oops, did not realize I was driving to the speed bumps. But nonetheless, it made it to the warehouses. So, there we go, that's the first one. Made it one lap and then to the warehouses before the mud. Okay guys, on to our second vehicle. I've got Bishu Pessima, the newer edition. And I've got the 2.0 LX, which I'm assuming is a V4. But, we'll see how it does. This is kind of a lower mid range of the Pessima Spectrum. Just as that Kovet I used was lower mid range of Kovets. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. This thing... It is a bit bigger than the Kovet, obviously. It seems to have a little bit more speed to it. But hopefully that doesn't hurt us too bad. <clears throat> speed can be good and bad on these endurance tests. They can make us that you land jumps a bit better, but they can also make us so that you get into more damaging situations, but we will just have to see. And those speed bumps back in the industrial area I just passed, or what I called the, uh... I think I called it the... Warehouse area earlier. Uh, which there's multiple warehouse areas, so I should really change that name, but... Um, those speed bumps are not required for me to go over. But I will sometimes go over them. It's just with this car, I had two earlier takes where... It just instantly ripped off one of the front tires for some reason on one of them, so I decided just to avoid it to be safe. But our radiator is leaking already again. But right now we're at the point that the Kovets radiator was starting to get, or the temperature was starting to get too hot, so hopefully we have a bit better luck. Although, with this thing, it's pulling a bit more to the side. It's pulling to the left, I'm not turning there uh, until I had to, but yeah. It's pulling to the side, so steering may become an issue. And that's something that is a common... Ooh, just enough speed. That's something that is a common issue with some of these front-wheel drive vehicles, is the wheels will get too screwed up in the front from landings, and you'll lose power as well as steering. And then if one of those axles breaks, you're boned. And we're reaching the final jump before the new lap. Just gotta pass over these slalom road bumps. Lumps. Road bumps. And we've made it to the second lap. Now I'm having high hopes for this thing because, well, in comparison to the Kovet, because of our current temperature situation, but we've just... oh, there goes a hubcap. And yes, I know I cut this corner a bit, but it lost control on landing, so I won't put it against it. Um, yeah, let's just hope the steering does not give after anything soon. Because, yep, front right axle is broken. And that actually kills this thing before the Kovets mark. Which is, makes me sad, because I was expecting this thing to do better. I'm going to take a look at the damage a little bit here. This front right wheel axle is what went here. See, it's kind of shoved back into it now. Just too many hard landings on that front, mixed with the road bumps. Kind of made it suffer. This other front one is actually being pressed back a little bit too, but... Minimal. No, I say minimal, it's actually kind of bad damage, but not for BMG. <laughs> the front end here, and their window shield shattered, but besides that, and I think the rear suspension and alignment's a bit off. It fared pretty well. And so, we'll go to the next one. For our third and final vehicle, we have the ETK 800 series, the 854. Let's see. And uh, I'm not 
having too high hopes for this thing due to its low ground, ground clearance, and being built for going fast on smooth streets, but we will see, and with how much it's bouncing around, the back end seems to also be sunk down a bit, I'm thinking the suspension is already taking uh, a bit too much of a hit for it to handle, but we will see how far we can push this thing as we round through the potholes and various bumps towards first warehouse area. Oh, come on. Yes, C is not liking me, but minimal damage on the front so far. It's actually doing a bit better than I was expecting. But we shall see this mud area being a little bit of a struggle for it with the electronic stability control, but made it through and made it over the rock wall. But it's becoming very bouncy and that the electronic stability control is killing my power in some places because I am pedaled to the floor. So I am going to turn that off for right now and see how we fare. If it causes an issue, like major issue, I will restart and leave it on. But for right now, I don't want it on. Plus, I like drifting, so. <laughs> but it's starting to pull a bit to the left as we do our fur er, major jump, and starting to lose control a bit there, but this thing is faring me a lot better than either of our other cars. And so maybe I was wrong with this one being wacky and stupid idea. Ooh. I just about whiffed it without the stability control, but it's kind of annoying having that on killing my power all the time. Ooh. Not a good landing there. Our suspension is definitely feeling the burn. Yeah, that car is much lower than it was sitting before. And I'm going to turn this ability control back on because it's pulling all weird angles and making it a little bit hard control, so I don't want to lose it to that. Our back bumper is now dragging and it's got some weird artifacting going on, but the game's not perfect. It's a lot of fun and one of the closest things that we'd ever get to it, although I've heard that they're coming out with a second beam and G drive, which I mean, I understand why they're doing it, instead of just keeping updating this one. Well, they're probably going to keep doing updates here, but I can understand the need to make a second beam and G-Drive, because they're having all the free uh, updates and everything. There's mods and everything, so there's no DLC you have to pay for, so they're probably eating a bit to keep their project going. <clears throat> But yes, this car is pulling annoyingly to the right. You can tell that the rear axle is shifted out to the left, which is causing a main portion of the pulling. So we're having to drive a bit crooked to compensate. Ooh, that was a rough bounce. Actually killed the... oh! Oh, we... It is an issue due to the steering, so we can't back up to save ourselves, but... Got some right pressure in places, and was able to pull out of that. Our right front wheel is dead in the water, and we cannot steer left right now. I'm going to call this uh, disqualified right now. But, it made it a good bit further than the others made it 
through the industrial area and past the mud, through the rock jumps and everything, and through that area that I can't think of the name quite yet for it. Probably called the barn jump, something like along those lines. And died here. So, our current standings are the police edition, sitting in first, which surprised me. Having made it roughly, uh, I'd say one and two thirds lap. Uh, making it through the barn jump on the second lap. The uh, covet in second, making it to the first industrial area on its second lap. And then the pessima, making it to its, or just before the industrial area, after the road bump area on its second lap. So everything has made it to lap two, but not very much further. There you have it. Uh, next time I will take these three same vehicles onto a different track, which I'm going to be using the off-road track at West Coast, uh, on West Coast, and we will see how that goes. I know there's a big jump in there that some cars might not handle, but with taking a penalty of injury to self, if they can keep going, I will allow them to drive around that obstacle, just because if you don't have the speed anymore to get over it, it's a little unfair, or to climb it either, it's a little unfair just to count it out then. So, if it still has the get up and go to get around the obstacle, that one jump on the west coast, I will allow it. Thank you guys, and see you in the next one.